Hello again and welcome to the next video on representing data graphically. In this particular video we'll be focusing on a new technique and that is drawing stem and leaf plots. Now stem and leaf plots, they're sometimes called stem plots, are another way that we can represent information that's contained in a frequency distribution table. And I'm going to start off by showing you what a possible stem and leaf plot could look like. Down here below on the left hand side is an example of what we call a back to back stem plot. And this particular stem plot shows the ages of males and females attending a bowling alley. Now let's just have a look at the structure of this back to back stem and leaf plot. You'll notice that at the top there is a key and it says 1 stroke 5 equals 15 so that's obviously providing us some sort of information and then we've got some headings leaf stem and leaf we can see that the left hand leaves seem to have something to do with females and the right hand leaves are to do with males the stem numbers down the center one two three four five and six have got, have got something to do with their ages and we can also see over at the right hand side over here that we have a drawing or a picture of a tree which I guess a little bit resembles that stem and leaf plot that we have over to the side here. So maybe that's got something to do with why it's named a stem and leaf plot. Okay, now here's this same stem and leaf plot. We're going to have a look at this in a little bit closer detail. We're going to begin by just noticing that each piece of data in a stem plot is made up of two parts. I'm going to highlight one particular point here which is this one over here. I'm just going to circle it. That number there you may see is just an 8 but it actually is representing the number 48. The 4 from the stem is the 4 tens part and the 8 over in the leaf is the 8 units part. This particular 8 here is representing a 48 year old male who attends the bowling alley. Now in contrast over here this 9 is representing a 29 year old female who attends the bowling alley. So we can see that each piece of data is represented by a matching leaf and we can see that all of the stems coming down here seem to be in ascending order from 1 through to 6 which actually stands for 10 through to 60 and each of the leaves coming out this way seem to be also in ascending order and from this way from closest to furthest away from the center are also in ascending order okay so some interesting features of a back-to-back -back stem and leaf plot All right, we're going to have a look at a little bit of a simpler stem and leaf plot to, to get started with. We're going to focus our attention on displaying the following heights in centimetres of 11 students in a stem plot. And you can see that we've got our 11 values listed over here. Before I start my stem and leaf plot, I need to do some planning. I need to locate the smallest value which happens to be 142 in this case, and the largest value, which is uh, over here, 167. So I need to make sure that I leave enough room and I include values that go from 140 up to at least 160. Now the leaves that are in this section here are only going to contain a single digit. In other words, they're going to contain the units value of each height. So 153, for example, it would only be the three that would be in the leaf part over here. The 150 would have to get mentioned in here. So it looks to me like my stem values have to include 140, 150, and 160. Now, I just want you as well to notice that we don't actually include the zero for here, but I do need to make you realize that that's standing for 140, 150, and 160. 
Okay, let's come back down here. We'll grab our pen up again. Now, those 140 values, I'm just going to list them as I see them. So I've got one value for 142 centimetres. I've got 148 centimetres. I've got 143 centimetres. And I think that's it for the 140s. For the 150s, I've got 153, 150, and I've got 158, another 158, 154, and 156. Now I have a look at my 160s values, which is 167 and 161. I should do a quick count up. I should have 11 leaves here because there are 11 pieces of data. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So that's good. Now there's only one problem with this stem and leaf plot that I have created here. I have got these values here ordered from smallest to biggest, but I haven't done a very good job of ordering these ones across from smallest to biggest. So this is what we call an unordered stem and leaf plot. So this is not what we want as our end result. However, I can use this unordered stem and leaf plot to make some changes and create a completely ordered stem and leaf plot. So coming over here, having a look at 142, 148, 143, obviously I needed to have them in this order smallest to biggest. Coming back to the 150s I needed the 0, then the 3, the 4, 6, 8 and 8 and then finally 161 followed by 167 and this is what we call our ordered stem and leaf plot. Now last thing that I need here is I need a key and a key shows us quite quickly what each of these leaves represents. So I'm just going to pick the very first one up here and make it quite clear that 1, 4, line 2 stands for 142 centimetres and that is my key. Alright, once I've completed that have a quick look and I've got everything listed there. Note every piece of data has been included, nothing's been left out. They're all in order from smallest to biggest. I could quickly notice what the range is by seeing the smallest value 142 and the biggest value 167. I could even count through and work out which one is the middle or the median value from my 11 values, it would be the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That would be the middle value because it's got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 before it and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I can see the median is 154 centimetres. As you can see, there's lots of information that I can gain from this particular stem and leaf plot. Okay, so what were the key ideas from today? Each leaf represents one piece of data. So if there's 25 pieces of data, there will be 25 leaves. Hopefully you noticed from the stem and leaf plot that I created on the page before that each piece of data or each leaf is evenly spaced. I haven't crammed some in together. I've imagined a particular spacing in between each number there. Every stem plot must always include a key. For example, 3 line 5 equals 35 centimetres as an example. And back-to-back -back stem plots would be used if we have two related sets of data that we're trying to show the information for at the same time. So they would be good to use if we were looking at males and females, for example. Okay, so that's it for today's video. Think about what your summary points are and write those into a couple of sentences in your own words. And I'm pretty sure you'll have a question that you would like to ask when you get back to class as well. So jot that down now as well. Okay, see you next time.